Ontario-born Michael Christie has the literary world abuzz with his debut collection of darkly funny, insightful stories set in Vancouver, some on the hard scrapple downtown east side. When Michael's not working in a homeless shelter, writing or teaching creative writing, he pursues a more athletic endeavor in the professional skateboarding world. He is currently senior editor at Color Magazine, which is Skateboard's culture publication, and it is my pleasure to welcome Michael Christie to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Fanny. Well, skateboarder turned to scribe. Yes. How did that happen? When did it happen? Um, it was sort of a process that was going on uh, for most of my life. I am a longtime reader, and uh, you know, as I was in my skateboard career, I started to realize that my body was sort of starting to break down a little bit, and uh, <laughs> I was going to need something else to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And writing was something that I'd always done and reading, so it seemed like a natural. Of course. Uh, do you still have your first skateboard? Is it bronze? I don't know. It is long gone, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, I didn't uh, keep I would love to have it, though. But you'll keep this book. I will keep this book. <laughs> you yeah. know why? It's really good. Well, thank you. Mm. So nine stories. What's the secret to writing a short story, do you think? Um, the short story is unique in that it is more like a poem than a novel. Or it's actually also mm. more like a joke, because you, you have to get in, and you have to establish the characters, and then you have to get out quickly. And uh, so, yeah. Sure, and, and the first paragraph, you have to get me in quickly. You do. And uh, I, all of the people who endorse this book on the back, mm -hmm. they write well. Yes. Uh, their, uh, their craft is evident. Uh, Lee Henderson says about you, about this book, uh, his language picks you back up again and dusts you off. His wise, dumb characters become your new friends. And their stories remind you of the strange, funny struggle that is written on our collective heart. Lee, and Lee Henderson is a fantastic writer in his mm -hmm. own right, so I'm very happy so, that, yeah. Uh, it's beautiful prose. Yes, it is. Now, back to you. Uh, one of my favorite stories in the book, uh, yes. Bernice yeah. and Wanda. Bernice, having worked in the shoe department, at Woodward's, yes. when we had a Woodward's, <laughs> where they sold Paris hats and peanut butter, That's right. just about everything. And Wanda, her sister, and Wanda suggests to Bernice mm -hmm. that she um, move away from Vancouver and into her coach house uh, of, uh, th that's on her property in Kelowna. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bernice is the owner of a thrift shop in uh, Vancouver's downtown east side. She's been there for many years. Uh, is, was left by her husband early on in her life and sort of has been stuck in this thrift store. Oh, stop there. Yeah. About, I, I don't know how you imagined this, <laughs> but when uh, Bernice's husband, Gus, left, yes. it was a bit odd because, do you want me to tell the story? Sure, yeah. Or you tell the story because it's such a good story because Bernice is doing, I think, his laundry. That's right. And she finds a cleaning ticket in the pocket seemingly innocuous thing um, but she so she takes the cleaning ticket into the dry cleaner hoping to just do Gus a favor mm -hmm. and she return is given in return a dress that is uh, much too big for her a green dress with a mink collar that's right that's obviously not Gus's <laughs> certainly not Gus's no mm -hmm. yeah and that that's told in backstory and that's sort of the story of how her marriage uh, came apart came apart because yeah. she's a very smart woman Bernice, she leaves the dress that she's picked up at the cleaners yes. on the kitchen table. Yeah. Now Gus walks in and sees it and thinks, I am in such trouble. Yeah. Yes, that he, he leaves the kitchen and is gone. And forever. leaves her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a lot more to the story, but. There is much more. Sure. Yeah. Uh, an interesting part of it is what people th uh, throw away or give to shelters thinking that somebody in the shelter will want this stinky old t-shirt with holes in it. Yes. What's that about? Well, that's sort of a theme that runs through the book, and that is objects. Um, the stories are linked in the sense that objects from other stories will sort of turn up later in subsequent stories. Mm -hmm. um, and it, thematically, it's kind of the idea that there are these used up people around the city as well um, uh, that we sort of ignore and they circulate around and uh, it's, it's, it's important to pay attention sure. to everyone, mm -hmm. I would say. And used up people, as you know so well because you work on the downtown east side, used up people who uh, weren't used up kids. 
used up people who started out like you and me often, very right? Much, very much so. Yes. Uh, uh, Sir Ben Kingsley said something brilliant. In every street child is a prince with potential. We ignore it our peril. So your downtown east side connection. Why did, why do you work down there? What was that about? I don't work there anymore. Okay, um, but, but you did. I did. Yes, uh, for 6 years. I had a psych I got a psychology degree from Simon Fraser University and I quickly learned that it was going to do nothing for me in terms <laughs> of employment and so I got a job uh, at an emergency homeless shelter uh, in the downtown east side, sort of mm. an entry level position and I was there for many years. And what did you learn about humans? A lot. I mean, I, it was, it's just this sort of wash of all kinds of humanity just mm -hmm. comes over you, you know, and the, uh, from the greatest people that I've ever met to the very worst people mm -hmm. that I've ever met. And uh, it, it changed my perspective on how a human being works. And it really feeds into my fiction, I think. Very much too. so. So, I mean, I have not worked a lot on the downtown east side, but some. Uh, many moons ago sure. when it wasn't so bad. Right. Uh, as you know, when Dan Rather was shocked <laughs> after going to Vietnam, yeah. <laughs> that's something. <laughs> you know, so Dan Rather's shocked, the world's shocked. But uh, back to the people who struggle. Mm -hmm. And some are funny and some are sad, but the struggle. And the, the humor is a very big part of the book. As I, mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't want to write a sort of uh, a finger-wagging poverty book that just assaults you with all the details of poverty and says you should care more about these people. I really wanted to do more than that, uh, to go inside people's lives and to show that in many cases things are very funny down there mm -hmm. because they're so absurd. And when we have this juxtaposition in Vancouver, we have such high uh, elevated people with these low people, there's humor there to mm -hmm. be found. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, a lot of that is in the book as how, well. How else do you get through a day? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's helpers. There's the street nurse in there. But how you write is so beautiful in that when you were describing in one of the stories a crack pipe. Yes. And how this addict uh, revered the crack pipe, how he held the crack pipe. Yes. And you said with reverence, like you would hold a cricket. Really? Yeah. Where did that come from, I mean, I, Michael? I, 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 there, there are details uh, in the book from my experiences in the mm. downtown. And that one, I mean, I have seen uh, drug users hold uh, drugs with reverence. Uh, mm -hmm. So that one, you know, that was a metaphor that I, that I got. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I, but, I mean, at the same time, a lot of this stuff in the book is made up, you know, uh, most of it. Sure. So. But a sex trade worker, for instance, yes. uh, going back to the Bernice and Wanda story, a yeah. uh, sex trade worker who works in the thrift shop, mm -hmm. and she has a need to have lots of stuffed animals. Yes. That's, that was someone that I knew. So, was it? Yeah, that was a real detail. And were yeah. you at the funeral? Uh, when I was. she died? Yeah, I was. And did somebody actually put a toy in her coffin? Um, yes. Okay. Because it was, it, what was interesting about that story to me mm -hmm. is people say things like in eulogies, yeah. she's better off dead, sure. <laughs> you know, essentially. Yes. Like she didn't have the best life, so she's mm -hmm. really happier dead. Yes. And I, I mean, I, I, I attended a number of uh, funerals uh, just as things go in the mm -hmm. downtown east side of people that I worked with. And there was often at, uh, in the eulogy speeches, this sense of, you know, oh well, yeah. you know, kind of like, uh, even from the family, which was, you know, very difficult, sure. obviously, to sit through. Yeah, and often from the family, they talk about themselves. Yes. Because this person that they're burying, who they bore or who they loved, mm -hmm. is like, yes, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of embarrassing. And that, that sort of, and it's a very human thing to do, to distance ourselves mm. f from our failures or, our, you know, raising a kid who ends up becoming a sex trade worker, people, you know, they cut it off. And yes. uh, this book is very much about opening those lines up again, I think. Of all the do-gooders on the downtown east side, and there are many, and mm -hmm. I don't mean to berate them with do-gooders, but yeah. people who are trying to help uh, yes. build a better shelter, a, a safe injection site, a Portland hotel. Yes. What do you see as, as, as the need down there? The as a writer, as a human, uh, as, as a, a human, skateboarder, I, <laughs> there needs to be more skate parks. No, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, the 
I mean, the, the real, real problem, and all and programs and shelters and housing is all very, very important, but the real systemic problem is poverty in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and the downtown east side is the tip of the iceberg in terms of the poverty, uh, growing poverty and growing inequality through all of Canada. So I think if we don't address those issues, we can build as many shelters as we want and we'll all be living in them mm -hmm. someday. True. And, and the working poor poverty, as, as you saw, there were people once at the top of their game on the street at Absolutely. the bottom of their game. Yes. And severe mental illness, we have to address we that. We have to address it. We've been cutting funding for those programs mm -hmm. for years and we're reaping the benefits of it, or the, the problem. Sure. Now, so. so the career skateboarding part of you, are you going to write about that? Um, I've been considering it. It's very hard to write about something that was is so close to you. Uh, and there's also this sort of feeling that skateboarding may be, um, you know, uh, people may not be interested in reading about an adolescent skateboarding. So I'm <laughs> grappling with those, um, but I, mm -hmm. I, I'm interested in writing about it. We'll put it that way. I'm sure. Yeah. It took this took four years. Yeah. You write in on Galliano Island. Where are you writing? Galliano Island right now. Yeah. So a place to create. A little place to create. Yes. How great! This mm -hmm. is marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Michael Christie, The Beggar's Garden.